So here's what the charts look like. <coughs> this is a printout. And everybody looks at this the first time and goes like, oh, it's too much information. Well, it's not really. It's very simple. And, and here's an explanation for this. If we're going to look, I would like you to look here at the heart rate. And you notice there's a turquoise bar to begin with. Well, that was eyes open, resting, baseline. The next light blue bar was eyes closed. So we can see what happened to the heart rate between eyes open and eyes closed. It, it's this simple. Then when they did the math test, that's the green, what happened to the heart rate? Well, take a look. The heart rate went crazy trying to do a simple little math test. And then it came back down again after. It recovered in that light blue. That's a recovery. And then the noises, which is like dentist drills and dogs barking, we can see what happened to the heart rate there. It slowed down a bit. And then what happened was it went back up a little bit during recovery. During the breathing exercise, we want to see them slow the heart rate down. It didn't happen in this person. And then the last one is recovery. So now we've got a picture of this, what's going on dynamically in a simple little bar chart where we can compare one bar to the next bar, and we can compare it to normals. And if you look in the center, like look at the green bar in, in heart rate, you see it's got a stick pin with a long pin on it. Well, between those two cross lines is the normal area, is the ideal range. So we can see in the heart range, she goes way above the ideal. And it's that simple. Is it ideal or is it not? And if it's not, how bad is it? And is it responding to stress and recovery the way it's supposed to? And then that applies to every one of these things you see on here. So in the top left-hand corner, that's the EEG. And we're looking at what's going on in the cortex from beta activity, SMR, alpha, and theta. And we can see whether she responds normally, or they, this person, whoever it may be, responds normally to stress. So the stressors are the solid-colored ones, and the recoveries are the light blue ones. Well, every time we stress them, they should go up in beta. And every time that they relax, beta should drop. And it does in this case. That's what we would like to see. Okay? Uh, when we look at alpha, it's the other way around. Both alpha and theta should go increase during relaxation times. Remember, those are conscious and subconscious relaxations. Well, alpha does what it's supposed to do. It goes up beautifully, picket fencing, in relaxations, and it goes down the way it should during the stress times. We don't want you to fall asleep during stress. That's when the lion gets to eat you. Well, the same thing should happen here in theta. We should see that same pattern in theta. We don't. So, so subconsciously, there isn't the relaxation going on there that we'd like to see. In other words, she can't turn off the stress. So we can see there's some abnormality. The other thing we see is there should be way more beta activity, because this person is conscious when we're doing this, way more beta activity than alpha or theta. There's not. It's about, matter of fact, theta or alpha is a little higher than theta, so they're not producing enough beta activity. They're not being alert enough overall. And what's the effect that this is going to have? Well, the heart rates aren't bad. They go up slightly. They're just on the top end of normal cost, but the variation isn't very good on it. So now we're going to look at heart rate variability, which is this one over here. And what we want to see in heart rate variability is all the columns should be tall in the center not in the high area, but in the middle. Well, they're not. So this tells them when we see high bars in this area on the right-hand side, it tells us they've got poor heart rate variability. If we see tall spikes way up, lots of tall spikes in a very low area, it tells us that there's been some physical damage done to the heart. This is an incredible um, tool to be using in the office because you can spot problems developing in people long before the blood chemistry goes off. That was developed by the um, cardiologist in, in North America. A skin conductance, we can see our skin conductance is way below normal. This suggests chronic stress. We can see the hand temperatures are way below where the ideal should be. We can see the respiration is way above. And we can see her muscle tone is just crazy. I mean, when you started out, the left side was bad. We see that there's, when you're breathing, they elevate the left shoulder. We can see all sorts of neurological challenges to this person on here that says, wow, no wonder you've got problems. Your nervous system's a mess. So that's what we look at in these charts. Let me go to the next one here. This, this is just some things. I've already explained this to you. Here's a patient report. And so this is a very easy, good, bad report. And we're looking at things like heart rate, hand temperature, respiration, skin conductance, and, and shoulder muscles. And if they're on the zero line or near that zero top line, that's, that's ideal or normal. 
These are standard deviations from normal. So what we saw in this person is the heart rate during the stress times. See it under S. This is an average of stress. All of those stress ones, noises, math test, recovery, eyes open, or not recovery, pardon me, uh, uh, breathing, wasn't good. Her heart didn't handle the stress well, but it recovered great. That's the green column that showed up there. Her temperature, not good to begin with and didn't recover. Muscle tone, you can see that right side wasn't good under stress and neither side recovered well. So this was and just another little thing for them to take home and say, listen, there's all sorts of things that aren't working right with you. And this is the kind of report that you can generate now um, for these, re these uh, SREs, we call them stress response evaluations. And it shows just what's going on with each one of these areas. So now you have a, a, an ideal area of where to focus and what's normal and what's not normal. And we've got our, finally, we have our chiropractic neurological exam. This is a scoliosis patient. And what we did with her, she had 33-degree scoliosis in thoracic and lumbar, and she came in and got adjustments and went and put herself on the training device and started to learn how to get the muscles to work right, left to correctly, working left to right. So they started to get that neuromuscular connection on the side that was not working. She found out how to get it working again and started training it. And what happened, she used this gorilla ball to do this. And what happened was this. This was the thoracic area just four months of care, chiropractic adjustment, and training, nothing else. You can see the imbalance on the one on the left where the reds and the greens are not alike at all. And after four months of care, they started to become much, much closer. By the next four months, the thoracic area scoliosis had disappeared. We've got the x-rays on this. Had disappeared completely, and the lumbar scoliosis, where the problem was originated, was now down by half. Just chiropractic adjustments and getting her on there to be able to learn how to connect that nervous system to those muscles that weren't working. Phenomenal stuff. This is a, a SRE. Uh, this is one of the early, on the left-hand side, it's one of the early ones. And you'll notice we've changed the colors and a bit of the layout. This is a, the one on the right is a second generation. Actually, it's a third generation. And we just changed the colors because it was easier to read than all these crazy colors we used to start with. But this is on the same person, two years of chiropractic care. And it came down to about a once-a-week care program after her initial. And I want you to take a look at things. I want you to look at the EEG where the red circle is on the left side. No variation, no picket fencing. Not good. After two years, look at the picket fencing taking place here now. That tells us that her brain is now starting to function normally. Her sensory motor rhythms are much better. They're functioning like they should. We've got a good pattern going there. She's actually generating more beta than she ever did. This woman changed. This was a woman who had worries and concerns and fear in her life to start with and is now just a, a person that feels much safer and much more confident in her life and is much happier. But look at what happened when we changed the brain pattern. Her heart rate went from 80 to 120 to 65 to 80. Her heart rate variability, look at the improvement in those bad columns on the right, the red circle and the green circle vast improvement in her heart rate variability. Her skin conductance was 1.5 to 3. Normals are 0.8 to 1.5. She dropped to 0.5 to 0.8. She dropped into normal on that. Respiration went from a highs of 17 down to 13, well within the normal ranges now. SEMG, her left shoulder was crazy to start with. Now they were normal and balanced. The only area she needs to continue to work on is her hand temperatures. And so now she needs to be doing the adjustments and getting retraining on hand temperatures. We can change this.